Silicon pulp molds. What do we need and how do we do it? Let's talk about it. All right, guys, so this is something we get a ton of questions about. How do we do it? What do we need? Uh, so I thought I'd do a little video uh, on exactly this uh, because it seems to be a hot topic and it's a really, really good indicator of how your port looks, like to actually look at it from outside rather than looking in a hole and trying to guess how that's short-term shaped. Once you have a mould in your hand, uh, it makes it easy to measure. Um, and again, um, it tells a whole story just to be able to see it like that. So I think that's a great thing. I've been doing it for 20-something years. It's, um, as I said, it really helped me look at a pot and understand where we needed to take some work, especially when you understand uh, CSA and knowing that, okay, I have to take metal out of this area. Now let's look at the mould and say where's best. If I take it out of the roof, I'm going to end up with a bump. That means the air's turning more. If I take it out of the floor, that's going to straighten the floor line up. So there's your answer. And I'm just talking hypothetically, but um, that's why I like them. So what are we going to need? We're going to need um, some silicon rubber and a 3% catalyst. So with this, uh, you've got to do it in the warmer weather, which in Australia, uh, that really isn't a problem. It's always generally warm, but um, either way, we do get some cold winters. So in the new shop, we're actually building a temperature-controlled engine room, so in the future, I'll have to do it in there. Um, the other thing is just petro petroleum jelly. All this is doing is stopping the product sticking to the port. Now, I'm just using the cut head, obviously, to make it a little bit easier. I've had to make up some dummy guides because, uh, silly me, uh, knocked the guides out of this before we made the mould. So I've just made some temporary aluminium guides that I'm going to use just to obviously hold the valves in position. So we just need some tape, uh, scales, and something to mix it in, and just a little spatula. So the first thing we're going to do is basically just um, lube everything up get the valves in, tape the combustion chamber shut, then we're gonna level the head up to the, to the intake port is level, and then we'll be able to mix the product and actually pour it in. So let's get set up. Awesome. Of course, batteries had to be low. They were fine five minutes ago when I checked them. <laughs> so we'll zero that. I'm going to start with this. The port isn't huge, so probably 200 grams will do us. So 3% of 200, so that's six grams of, actually this seems a little thick, but we'll see how it goes. I did lend this to a friend, so I don't know whether he's left the lid off or we'll try it. If it doesn't work, I'll make some more. I'm at 120 and it already looks like it's nearly enough, but I'll do 200 just in case. A little more is better than a little less. Okay, we're at 170, 180. 
I'm getting close there. 190, I think that'll do it. Need a little bit more in. Yeah, it's going to blob and... There we go. Josh try of 200. So, no zero. We're going to put six grams of the catalyst. Let me see. Almost. All right, so now we're just going to mix it up. It will get a little thinner. I'm really hoping this is still okay. It seems like it's got a bit of moisture in it. It's been left open. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to use this, guys. I'll call that quits and I'll open a new bottle. I think, um, as I said, they've left the lid off. All right, let's try the fresh pot. That's flowing much better. There we go. 207. Mm, we'll clear that. Catalyst, I think I'll go light on this. Let me just get another spatula. All right, let's do this. Four, you should do us. You got a good quick mix in the warmer weathers like now. We want to be as quick as we can. Doesn't need much of a mix. I have tried drills and stuff before, but it's too hard to get it off it. The spatula is easy because you want it to pour. It should do us. I'm just going to stand the head up a little bit. We're going to pour it in. Try and get it right down into those valve seats. It's nice and liquidy. We'll stop it there for a second. We'll get it back level. Try and get the air bubbles out. Let it sink in. The other thing I've used, which you'll laugh at, is a massage gun. Uh, just put it on the head and brrr, and uh, it tends to get those air pockets out. Not that we're after a perfect mold, but we just, you know, we want something that we can at least measure. All right, well, that's about as good as it's going to get, I think. We'll leave it there and we'll come back in, um, well, I'll probably come back tomorrow now. And uh, I'll show you how to pop that out. All right, guys, so we've left it overnight. You don't have to. You can usually wait a few hours, but I usually test it with the sample pot. So you can usually pull it out fairly easily. Yep, and there we go. So 
and get it off. So that's nice and set. So now we're going to take the tape off, we'll get the valves out, uh, and then we've got to work the mold out. So let's do that. All right, so let's do it. We'll get the tape off. And let's hope it actually sat properly, huh? Hey? Oh, little bits come out of the valve seats. Which I guess isn't too bad of a sign. I was worried it wouldn't get all the way down. But um, one valve out. Oh, it actually looks all right. Surprise, surprise. All right. Now just pull this away from each side and then we're going to flip it over and then you're just going to push it ain't easy It's even easier once you port too, because our minimal cross-sectional area is probably here in this port. So it gets very tight uh, through there. So we're trying to push a bigger CSA through a smaller one, which obviously becomes a bit of a drama. So when you do ports, when the MCA is at the ring where it should be, and where I, I believe anyway, um, it, it becomes a lot easier. Here we go. Yeah, you can see, I think even the window is a bit tight on this one. There we go. Not a bad result, guys. Not a bad result. So straight away we can see obviously a few areas we need to fix. Um, the step in the window. So we're probably going to bring that level. So we will drop the floor slightly. Um, we're probably going to sort this divider out. They're not bad on these. You can see where the problem is in a few areas there. That's a little narrow through here. That's what I was talking about. In the short term, it's not bad. There's not a lot of core shift, but um, we will work on that. I would love to weld this up and delete the injector and get the injector up high, but we're just not going that crazy. I might, I might fill the end of it and maybe shrink it. It's far too big for my likings, but we'll wait and see. So there you go, guys. That's basically how you do a port mold, and you can sit it down. I, I just pop the valves back in. We've we went over maybe a mil there. You can go around with a razor blade and clean that up, but that gives you an idea. We can see that casting flash line down the port we can see how the insert leads into the bowl remember with obviously uh twin cam stuff that they, they don't have a traditional bowl and that's what i was talking about in some other videos so you don't always want them expanding into a bowl or having a, a big bowl in them because they don't operate like a two valve head we're not compensating for a really really tight minimal cross-sectional area you know, just over the short turn or something like that. So, but um, yeah, not 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 the greatest port, but because we've got a, we've got a kink here, and then we've got the short turn here, but not not horrible. I might even see. I'll have to measure the head, but I I would like to take that line to there. That'll get me more volume. But um, as you've seen with the castings, we're a little thin. 
So this is where I'll go now and actually measure all this CSA up. So now I have a port mold, so I can measure in the port and then I can also validate it off the mold. And we can see, and you can also put radius gauges on there if you've seen a, a radius gauge before. So a real simple radius gauge and, and you can actually see what size those radiuses are, right? And that also makes it easier to measure. So you can do diameter and radius. So it might be slightly um, rectangle shape with, with really, really big radiuses. So um, like especially up in here, we could do that as a rectangle. And remember, we ignore the injector area. It's not part of our CSA, so don't add it. A lot of people do some of the flow bench. If you're going to flow this on a bench, block, block that off, fill it up with... Um, plasticine um, and, and don't account for it because it adds extra error and they will flow better with the injector error but when the manifold's on remember the roof line is here the, the the runner doesn't see that as a flow path so don't use it on the flow bench as a flow path if you're testing so all right, guys, that wraps it up. Hopefully that explains it. Any questions, let me know. Um, but, yeah, that's how you do a port mold. As I said, there's n no real tricks to it. Obviously, you just got to watch temperature. If it's too hot or too cold, uh, it's best to do it around room temperature, obviously. Um, and like I said, just dribble it in. Make sure it's a good consistency. You see that the other stuff we had it had gone off so make sure the product is uh still good if it generally if it sits around for six months it it can go off so but um as i said it's not super dear i think um we get the kits for about 40 bucks australian so uh and i can do i can do like four port molds i generally like to do the intakes blue and the um exhaust in a red or a pink you know just for my OCD, but you can, you can do them in either, but yeah. All right, guys, catch in the next one.